It's funny how in electronics many things can take you down a rabbit hole, especially after you move away from theory and start building actual projects with real components. Take this switch for example. It is one of the parts I chose for my new breadboard power supply project, which I'll show you in a bit. Seems simple enough, right? Press it once and it completes a circuit, press it again and it breaks the connection. But do you know how much current and voltage it can handle? How many cycles will it take before it breaks? And why does it have 6 pins? Not to mention debouncing and that you can accidentally order a button, not a switch, if you're not careful. What I'm trying to say is that even with seemingly simple projects, things can go in unexpected directions. Which brings me to my new breadboard power supply. Basic breadboard power supplies are typically limited to a couple of voltage settings, like 5 and 3.3 volts. I wanted to make something better, so I came up with this design, which can go up to 20 volts. And since it has a USB Type-C connector, it can be powered from a phone charger or a power bank. It is based around the HUSB237, a chip that negotiates higher voltages from compatible USB ports. It is simple to use and requires only a few extra components to work. But to make anything with this chip, I had to make my own circuit board, which is why I once again partnered with my sponsor, JLCPCB. If you need a custom circuit board, JLCPCB has you covered. For almost 20 years, JLCPCB has been providing affordable and reliable PCB and assembly services. Millions of engineers rely on JLCPCB to develop projects efficiently, and I've been using their circuit boards for several years. After I designed my PCB in Easy EDA, I simply uploaded my manufacturing files to JLCPCB.com. Prices start at only $2 for 5 PCBs, and shipping can be just as affordable. All the production happens in-house, ensuring the quality and reliability of the final product. And your PCBs can be ready to ship in just 24 hours. Sign up now with my link below to get free coupons and check out JLCPCB's special discount on 6-layer PCBs with free via InPad. And now back to the project. The HUSB237, which I'm using, is a USB power delivery sync controller. It is necessary because without it, I cannot get anything more than 5 volts from a USB port. The chip makes the request for me, depending on how it is configured. And in this case, configuration is as simple as it can be. There is a pin on the chip that you use to set the voltage you want. The requested voltage depends on what this pin is connected to. It could be ground, a resistor, a capacitor, or nothing. So I thought I'd just find a suitable switch with enough positions and make a circuit with all available options for all the voltages. What could go wrong? Eventually I found the one, and it was beautiful. This selector switch had 5 positions for 5 different voltages, a long shaft for easy manual operation, and a service life of 20,000 steps. Nice! There were just a couple of problems. First of all, I had a hard time figuring out which pin was which. It was confusing that pin 8 in Easy EDA was actually for position 5 on the switch. Secondly, I realized something that could potentially ruin the entire project. So it turns out there are two types of switches, shorting and non-shorting. Rabbit holes, remember? On a non-shorting switch, the wiper is disconnected during the brief moment when it's moving between positions. And on a shorting switch, there is a brief overlap between positions, so the wiper is never floating. What type is this one? I have no idea, the datasheet doesn't say. But if it is a non-shorting switch, there's a chance the chip will request 12 volts every time I switch voltage settings. But I crossed my fingers and proceeded anyway. I also wanted to have an on-off switch on the power supply. The question was, how do I add one? Some chips have a dedicated enable pin that turns them on or off, but this one doesn't have that. One option was to place the switch on the voltage bus, between the USB port and the output. However, this would mean that all the current would be flowing through the switch. I can request up to 5 amps at 20 volts with this chip, and I have no idea how much current this switch can handle. So I scrapped that idea, and instead I placed the switch between the voltage bus and the chip. This I believed would turn the chip on and off, which would enable or disable the power supply. Spoiler alert, I was very wrong. 
Anyway, another feature I wanted to add was a simple LED light to indicate when there is voltage on the output. The problem was using a single series resistor would be tricky when the input voltage can be between 5 and 20 volts. So instead I used a small voltage regulator with a fixed output of 3.3 volts. This might seem like overkill, but in practice this regulator and the parts around it cost less than 20 cents altogether. The impact on the cost of the board was minimal when the selector switch alone cost over $2. Ok, time to find out how well my breadboard power supply works. I just need to solder the pin headers. Four pairs go on the bottom. They allow the module to plug nicely into a breadboard. And on top I have four additional pin headers in case I ever need to use jumpers. The good news is that we have voltage, the power supply works. The bad news is that it doesn't quite work as I expected. First of all, the power button does not turn it off completely. Here I have it set to 5 volts. Whether the switch is pressed or not, I'm getting 5 volts at the output. Another issue I'm noticing, I cannot switch voltages on the fly. If I select a different setting, the chip does nothing. I have to turn the module off and then back on again for the new voltage to be requested. But it gets even weirder. If I use this cable with a built-in power meter, the power button does not cut off the voltage. However, with this other cable, the power button actually works. I'm not really sure why. Needless to say, I messed this one up. I mean, the power supply is usable, but it's glitchy in its current form. On a more positive note, this chip is compatible with several other protocols in addition to USB power delivery. This is why I can get up to 9 volts from this old Samsung phone charger or 12 volts from the USB Type-A port of my power bank, probably because of Qualcomm Quick Charge support. What's also great is that the module can supply tons of power, more than you would ever need for a breadboard project. And no, the PCB does not get hot while doing so, unlike this high power 8 ohm resistor. Just look at it handling 73 watts like it's no big deal. On the other hand, I really should have thought of adding short circuit protection. So guys, learn from my mistakes. Clearly this simple to use chip has potential, but my implementation leaves a lot to be desired. What should I do to improve it? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.